Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our first full day of the gathering, our international gathering in 2018. And our uh, premier speaker today will be Reg Moore. Reg has uh, been uh, in, involved in the faith for many, many years now, since uh, 1980. And uh, he was the appointed to the uh, International Baha'i Council uh, slash Universal House of Justice by Dr. Leland Jensen uh, in the 1990s. He was actually the 12th uh, member appointed, and uh, the only one where Dr. Jensen wrote uh, that he was worthy to be a member of the council. He didn't say that about it, any of the rest of us. <laughs> so I always thought that was a good compliment. And without embarrassing Reg too much, uh, uh, Reg is going to be presenting us uh, with a topic for discussion and food for thought uh, entitled Justice. This is very significant because the different manifestations of God and teachers that have come to the world are embodiments of all the qualities and attributes of God, but sometimes they focalize on one specific quality that's most needed for the day and age in which we live. So Jesus is known for love, uh, Krishna detachment, uh, Moses brought the law, Zoroaster purification, uh, Buddha uh, meditation, Muhammad brings submission, but Baha'u'llah especially brings justice. And the world has never seen justice before. And with no further ado, Reg, uh, take us on a trip. All right. Well, thank you, Neil. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, the manifestations of God, from Adam to Baha'u'llah, have recommended in each of their revelations uh, something called the Golden Rule. And they may state it differently. Uh, it may be... Uh, do unto others as thou you would have uh, them to do unto you, or um, uh, wish not for others uh, what you would not wish for yourself. But every single one of them has had something that you could say easily is the golden rule. About a month ago, uh, I was, or two months ago, I was uh, sitting and meditating on the golden rule and it became apparent to me at that time that they'd all recommended it. I've read it in every single one of the, the revelations. It's been public, publicized often. Uh, somebody has a list out there on the Internet that shows each one, too. And um, <clears throat> they are um, aimed at a uh, level of... Uh, comfort and uh, behavior for human beings that is something that we've been evolving toward for millennia. And um, this golden rule is, is a uh, primary piece of each revelation. So um, Baha'u'llah uh, prescribes storehouses uh, for the excess uh, wealth uh, in the world, which is that's something that um, is going to benefit humanity, and humanity will do that. We have to do that ourselves. And in recognition of the need uh, for uh, fairness in the world, and uh, so that uh, everybody on earth <coughs> can live in relative comfort. Uh, there's enough wealth to go around. We don't need to hoard or um, be involved in a game that uh, is about uh, acquiring uh, more material wealth. Uh, if we consider the comfort of our neighbors, then uh, we'll be living in the revelation. In fact, we'll be living in all of them. And that's, that's what each of them recommends. So anyway, uh, I'd like to hear what other people have to say about this, um, and uh, I open it up to discussion now. Thank you, Reg. Uh, who wants to start uh, with some feedback? Yeah, in the Islamic um, revelation, um, there are various traditions which talk about this. So for example, one of them, the Prophet Muhammad is quoted as saying, none of you can become a believer until they wish for their brother 
what what they wish to themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting because I also saw the list on the internet you were talking about, and it mentions, and some of them are very interest, interestingly worded as well. There are some African traditions in which um, um, an analogy is given, and it talks about a bird, and it says, would any of you um, like to poke a baby bird or something like that? So it kind of gives a very nice example to illustrate that you wouldn't like to be hurt, so why hurt others? You know, so this is very interesting. Yeah, that, that's mm. a good reason to become a vegetarian. Really. <laughs> <laughs> We've thought of that. Yeah, and so uh, the Creator, um, if you were the Creator, how would you want to be retreated, uh, treated? Uh, every single one of us is uh, created by God. And how would God want to be treated? Uh, God would want to be loved and respected. So it applies to God mm -hmm. too. Of course, yeah. And, and everybody else. That's a very interesting way of looking at it because normally when we look at the, this principle, this golden rule, um, we're just thinking of it in terms of treating human beings, you know, human beings treating one another the way they want to be treated. But, you know, this is a new way of thinking about it and which is very important as well. What about God, you know? Yeah. How does he want to be treated? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, I was thinking love. about yeah. this also when I started thinking about mentioning it in this group that um, it seemed very strange to me it would seem very strange to me if uh, someone <coughs> hasn't already <coughs> in fact everyone hasn't already thought about this in recognition of what the manifestations of God have pre prescribed for us and then I thought well maybe not I think I'll mention it. Yeah, it's good you mentioned it because I've never, I never thought of it in that way, you know. I haven't so I guess mm. I was floored when I realized that. Mm. Yeah. And then I was also thinking when you were talking, <clears throat> the interesting thing about God is that he says in every face you will see the face of God. And so the way that God permeates all things and then the way that we are able to manifest the light of God in our own way, the way that we have been enabled to do so, I feel like it takes it to a new level on how we are supposed to treat one another or to interact with one another. Yeah, yeah it's a lot um, nicer for everyone <laughs> to be able to do that. And that, that, um, that theme of loving your neighbor as yourself and paint uh, <clears throat> and um, Doing to others, you to have others do unto you. That golden rule, of, it is an essential aspect of justice, because in the first place, justice is paying, is, uh, is paying back to God what is God's. One time, the 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 scribes and Pharisees they approached the Lord Christ in, a, in when he was teaching, trying to trick him, because uh, they wanted to get rid of him. And uh, so they wanted him condemned by the by the by the Roman government as well as the Sanhedrin, and so they tried to trick him <clears throat> because at that time the Jewish nation was paying tax to Caesar, and they came and they approached him and they said, "Master, we know you're you're you you you're a teacher and you do all things. I can't remember exact words. I'll do all things correctly." And he said, "Tell us, is it?" Correct to pay tribute to Caesar, to pay tax to Caesar, yes or no? You were trying to trick him because if he said no, they immediately take witnesses from uh, that heard him and go and spread it all amongst the, 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 the or take it to the Roman authorities and said this one is rebelling against the, 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 the Roman rule, and a number of armies had already been destroyed by the Romans because for doing that, and they wanted him in that to be destroyed as well. So they would immediately take him, go to the authorities, and say. This one is rebelling against the Roman uh, rule. He says you shouldn't pay tax. So if he said no, they would do that. If he said uh, yes, then it's correct to pay. Tri then they, they, they'd say that he's, he's a, a traitor against his own people because the Jews, there was a, a wide sentiment of resentment against the, the Roman rulership. They thought they should be a theocracy, uh, you know, the way they were before, governed, yeah. governed by God alone. And, uh, and making their own decisions and rules in every aspect. So they tried to trick him. Of course, they couldn't trick him. He perceived their, their, their unscrupulousness. And, and, uh, 
And so he said to them, he said, bring me a denarius, which was the, the, the standard money of the time. He says, bring me a denarius. And then he, he, he pointed to it and he says, tell me, which, uh, which uh, inscription and uh, heading does it have? And they said, well, Caesar's. He says, by all means then, pay back to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. So that was a perfect expression of justice, to pay back to God the things that are God's. Of course, he created us, we owe him everything. And, 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 the, one, and the second commandment, when they asked him what's the greatest commandment, he said the first commandment is to love the God, your God with all, uh, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and all your vital energies. And the second is like it, you must love your neighbor as yourself, which is the golden rule. And that's perfect justice. To obey that second commandment is, is the golden rule. <clears throat> and that's justice in paying back to God the things that are God's. That's what it means to pay back to God the things that are God's, to obey his commands. And the, and the second commandment, which is the golden rule, is totally connected up with justice. Yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, it seems like the Ten Commandments are about the golden rule, the, all of them. And the counsels of Buddha, right. the Eightfold Path, and the, the five right uh, ways of making a living. And uh, I think I didn't say that right, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> each one of them has prescribed that. So. Anyone else? Well, the thought that popped into my mind is... Uh, if it's in an African tradition, Native American, and the Buddha says this, it's in the Quran, and Jesus says it, quoting Moses from the Jewish religion in the Old Testament, so it's in Judaism and Christianity. Um, I'm having trouble conceiving of all of these as different religions, mm -hmm. if I focus on the Golden Rule. Right. If they're all in the Golden Rule, it seems like they all came from the same source, so... I'm kind of having a struggle about like which church I should attend on Sunday or synagogue or mosque. Does it matter? I guess I'm asking you if we, if I want to go to a mosque or a synagogue, is it all one religion or are they different religions? It seems like I'm having a hard time seeing them as different religions. If I focus on the golden rule, they seem like the same source for these religions. So are they different religions or are they the same religion? They all, they all started off as the same. Basically, they all started off as the same. But humans and and uh, and uh, hum, human ego and things like that have caused some caused them to to deviate from the true teachings of their own founders to to a degree. And and uh, I I've attended more than four hundred different Christian churches. <laughs> Yeah, more, more than 400 different Christian churches. But uh, I'm always mm. cautious to try not to, 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 uh, to compromise my own Baha'i faith in attending those churches for us when they stand, all stand up and start singing about the Trinity. For example, I don't endorse it and I don't, I don't uh, you know, I don't, because there are false teachings amongst the, the Christians. Anything that they teach that is false or, or support that is false or something like that, I don't endorse it, but I do attend. I d have attended, and then in, engaged in, in interviews with them and, and dialogue with them to try and stimulate their thinking abilities. To yeah. Well, it seems like uh, every time a messenger comes along, that after his passing, and sometimes even before, a clergy class starts to rise up. Exactly. And that becomes a business between the clergy and the king uh, for the use of the people. That are gonna the sheep that are being shepherded by these clergy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It happens all the time. Even the ones yeah. that claim not to have a clergy class, they eventually develop one. <laughs> like <laughs> the, the Watchtower and Jehovah's Witnesses, they claim <clears throat> we have no clergy class. Yeah. You know, they say we have no all, all brothers and sisters, but very much they do have a clergy class. Yeah. You know, they have their hierarchy back in Brooklyn and. Uh, and everybody has to obey. If they speak a word against them, they end up in a secret inquisitional hearing, and they're out. Yeah. And they may not. They may not even say uh, directly to the people that basically you're slaves here. Yeah. To to our yeah exactly. our will. Yeah. 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 I th I think that may be the problem with trying to 
talk about uh, spirituality. I mean, we can't really teach spirituality, and this is a mention of a spiritual issue. But, um, I think everybody needs to come to their own conclusions about it. Um, uh, go, go by what the manifestation said. Anyway. <clears throat> to your question, Neil, um, you know, there's the golden rule, there's the unchanging aspect of every revelation that comes, but there's, when a manifestation comes, he comes and he brings revelation in two parts. Uh, religion is progressive, <coughs> with all having a common foundation. So they all come bearing the golden rule, you know, the spiritual qualities of love, justice, harmony, fidelity, concord. But then there's the ever-changing <clears throat> laws that are um, specific to the place and time that the manifestation comes. Mm -hmm. So, But then there's all the man-made rules and corruptions that, that enter as soon as the... Um, Establisher, the manifestation, then the establisher passes away. Sometimes there's these these manly well, dogmas exactly. that enter into developed religion. traditions. His Holiness mm -hmm. Christ told the Pharisees and the scribes, He says, "You have made the law of God invalid by your traditions." <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The, His Holiness the Christ spoke to the scribes and Pharisees, who were always opposing Him, mm -hmm. and He said, "He said, you have made the law of God invalid by your traditions." You know they develop. They had the. They have the. They have the Talmud. You know, with with their own, a lot of their own uh, traditions in it, and a lot of uh, common traditions. Uh, you know that they follow. That may not even be written down. But in the in that time when he was, during his ministry, they had made the word of God invalid because of 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 their um, of the, of their traditions. That in fact those same <clears throat> those same traditions that they had. Um, uh, generated clouds, which through which they could not recognize their own Messiah when he arrived, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> they were not able to. The majority were not able to accept it unless the one, less than one half of one percent of those to whom he delivered his message became believers in him by the time he was murdered. That's one in every two hundred of the women, men who were alive at that uh, in, during his ministry. Even in Jerusalem, there was a million people, and uh, there's a there's a, a prophecy which I I believe is a messianic prophecy in the Psalms. I think it's Psalm 18, is it, or I think it's Psalm 18, and it talks about the Messiah coming with clouds, coming with clouds, surrounded by clouds, and then it said a fire went before him and and bright shining. Light. Well, that's, that's what John the Immerser, John, John the Baptist, spoke about. That he was a bright light. And the, the, when he arrived, and the light did not overwhelm. Couldn't the 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 darkness in bright shining light and darkness. The darkness did not over overwhelm the, the, his light. But nevertheless, the vast majority of people could not perceive the light because of the clouds. I mean, he did things and said things which were which produced clouds. There were clouds, and they couldn't see through them. For example, amongst the Jews, and uh, it, and they, they lived with that for 1,300 years, that law, and it was a very, very strict, strict law amongst the Jews, no, no, no taking of blood. And uh, the animals had to bleed them correctly and properly, the same as uh, Muslims do. But uh, uh, one time when he was teaching, he said to them, and I, as I recall, it was five or six times he repeated to them, Again and again and again and again and again during one single discourse he repeated to them You must eat my flesh and drink my blood because my flesh is, oh. is true food and my blood is true drink If you do not eat my flesh and drink my blood you have no life in yourselves He repeated that in different ways five or six times in the same discourse and his listeners they started to disappear they started to walk away yeah. he said this speech is disgusting <laughs> who can listen to it because they were they were 1300 years of, of, of tradition you see but then further on in a verse when he was talking to his own apostles and disciples he says he says the flesh is, is no use at all it is the spirit that, that, that gives gives life he was giving them a spiritual teaching it was his his 
his his his fulfillment of all of those sacrifices and blood sacrifices that the law was there for to to make the Jews learn and think and recognize there is Messiah when he arrived the, the all of the, the, the all of the laws related to blood and, and sacrifices in the temple and that's why he was giving them the spiritual fulfillment of it his sacrifice and pouring out his blood as, as, as the Redeemer was the fulfillment of that. That's why he said, you must eat my flesh. But he was talking about a spiritual acceptance of his, of his teaching and they wouldn't have it. Some, some stayed and, then he, and they were going away, walking away one after another and uh, uh, totally disgusted. And he says to his apostles, he said, you also? He says, will you walk away? And Peter said, where will we, where will we go, Lord? You're the one who has the words of everlasting life. And, uh, and, and that was because they could see the light through the clouds. Yeah, but the Messianic yeah. prophecy in, in, in uh, Psalm, Psalm 18 talks about him. Says, it says, the heavens were bent down and he descended. God descended through his holy messenger. He descended. And it says that there was fire before him and clouds surrounded him those are the clouds he said so 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 many things to the jews which they could not accept because of their traditions their traditions produced clouds but the ones who could perceive and had were true seekers and had honest hearts they were able to see his the light right through the clouds and they became faithful and dedicated believers didn't cause any cognitive dissonance. It's yeah. A bunch of heat in their uh, yeah. organs to yeah. create that confusion. Yeah. Well, there were so many things that he said, that, and uh, and um, the scribes and the Pharisees were always saying, Elijah must come first. Elijah must come first. And they were teaching that. And they said, he's not Elijah. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. He, he's not he's not Elijah. John the Immerser said that he, he, that he was not the Elijah. And... Uh, and uh, and uh, so, so they were saying, uh, they were saying Elijah must come first before the Messiah. They were saying Elijah must come first. But they, even the disciples, up until right near the end, when he went up on the Mount of Olives and they saw the vision of Moses and Elijah, and the disciples came down, they asked him, said, "Why are the are the priests saying that Elijah must come first? He says, "I truly, I tell you," and he pointed to the future, which was His Holiness the Bab. He said, I tell you truly, Elijah will come. That's a prophecy of the future. future. He pointed back and he said, and he has come. Mm. And they did with him whatever they wanted. Because they, then it says, then the disciples understood that he was talking about John the Immerser because they chopped off the head of John the Immerser. And, uh, and, and he was the Elijah. Although he wasn't that person, he fulfilled the role. He fulfilled the role of the promised Elijah. Nobody knew it. None of the Jews, not a single person on earth knew it at that time except His Holiness the Christ Himself. And even for three years of His ministry, no one knew and the disciples didn't say until the vision triggered their question, why are the priests saying that Elijah must come? Then He said, truly I tell you, He will come and He has come. Then they realized it had already been fulfilled. But the vast majority were not able to perceive that. They had not been able to perceive that Elijah had already come. And they were saying, where's Elijah? Elijah must come first. According to their uh, understanding they must be able to recognize Elijah and they didn't have true seeking hearts and so they like the apostles and disciples so they never did recognize Elijah never did recognize him they were, they were so immersed in the tradition exactly that they and they had their time and their lives invested in it yeah that they had embraced that corruption yeah, yeah. yeah. from birth yeah we're in a very similar circumstance yes, right now. Say, yeah. About the same now. Oh, yeah. thank you, yeah, We're in a very, very similar circumstance right, right, right now. We're, 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 there's, there's tests, and uh, and uh, and things which appear to be clouds which present uh, prevent us from perceiving the the the, the truth and even uh, recognizing the true guardian. Things like that. There's so many things that you know, only the true seekers of pure hearts are the ones that are able to. To, to keep on progressing mm -hmm. spiritually, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I never knew that, Ross. Uh, he says he will come, and yeah. he has come, so he both identifies the Bob and uh, John the Baptist, and they did whatever they willed to both of them. 
Yeah, exactly. Because they riddled the yeah, Bob's body with exactly. 750 yeah. rifle yeah. rounds. Exactly. I never heard that before. That's yeah. news to me. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's nice. Right. Yeah, he said he will come. I Truly, I tell you, he, he, uh, Malijah will come. Future tense. Yeah. He will come. And he has come. Yeah. And they did to him whatever they wanted. Yeah, yeah see, and, and, and then there have been individuals, a number of the Christian religions, who perceived that he was talking about somebody in the future, and they claimed to be the Elijah. There's a number of them. Oh, oh they've shown up in different in different religions that that, that that they claim that they were the that they were are or were the the Elijah to come. A recent National Geographic magazine that uh, my son gets a subscription to. Uh, they had this uh, issue about Jesus. Well, they have the one about what was the historical Jesus like, and it might have been the same issue, but then apparently there's at least five people they identified who are alive in the world now, one in Africa, one in Asia, and these different places that claim to be Jesus Christ walking the earth uh, right now. And they show their uh, yeah. uh, white uh, 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 way in the people in the villages and stuff like this. But they, uh, they didn't mention... Uh, Baha'u'llah's uh, claims to fulfill prophecy. Yeah. yeah. It's like Matthew 24, where it says, uh, Many will come in my name, saying they are the Christ. Yeah. Don't go not out. Yeah. Well, actually, this is true of all of the <clears throat> this is true of all of the Christian religions that. Uh, they teach a false Christ, they teach the Trinity, you know, and, and, and so on. And it's in a sense, that is also an antichrist. Mm. That is also an antichrist, that whole, that teaching about the, 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 the Jesus is part of a, a Trinity and, and it opposes the teaching of the truth about the Lord of the age, Baha'u'llah. It's an antichrist. Yeah. They're, they're anti the meaning of uh, yeah. the term Christ, right? Yeah. yeah. Which means anointed descendant of David who yeah. sits upon the throne. Yeah. In answer wow, to your huh? question, sorry, sorry, Reg, do you want to carry go on? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, Neil, you know, your question which you asked, it is about the golden rule. I personally think um, the answer is yes, it's okay, you know, for people to go everywhere, wherever they like. And the reason for this is um, because despite you know, all the corruption, despite all the differences, um, you know, between all the different religions, the golden rule actually, it does make them one religion. And um, what you, you said, Kay, you know, the spiritual part of the revelation and the values which, are never, ever, uh, which never change, which always remain the same, they actually do make all the religions as one religion. It's just for us to be able to see all these religions as the same religion then uh, we can feel comfortable whichever church you go to. Um, it's like when Baha'u'llah says there should be an additional language and he says whichever country you go to you feel as if you're in the same country, uh, you're in your own country because people are speaking the same language as you. So similarly I feel that this is how we're supposed to feel uh, whichever church we go to we should feel that we're all part of the same religion. But as Ross you also mentioned we should also uh, we have a right to actually protect ourselves and our own faith, you know, from the corruption. Mm, so you've yeah. been to so many different churches, but nevertheless you are, at the same time, you're affirming the covenant and you're not actually diluting your faith. This is also very important. Each person has to actually, uh, their own personal beliefs, you know, uh, they should protect them. You know, right. We yeah. have to be aware mm. of, the, of, the, of the teachings of our own faith and watch for contra contradictions and things that violate. We don't want to endorse those. For example, even in the Christian churches, they celebrate, <clears throat> they celebrate uh, what they call the Lord's Supper or the Lord's evening meal. You know, they take the memorial, and uh, of course, that even their version of that is so badly corrupted in most of the churches. But um, <clears throat> the um, <clears throat> nevertheless, the the Apostle Paul, he spoke about that Lord's evening meal or the memorial of the Lord's death, because he says, "Keep doing this in remembrance of me." He says this this bread means my body. And this drink, this wine, means my blood. He didn't say it is his blood. He said the actual, actual Greek 
translated correctly, it says, this means my body. And it, oh. This means my, my body. It was, oh. a, it was a metaphor. And, uh, and he, he gave them that bread and wine to drink. At the, to, and once a year, on Nisan the 14th, the, 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 the Jewish, in the Jewish calendar, the time that he was sacrificed, nice on the 14th that's when they're supposed to gather together and remember not every twice a day or twice a week or once a month or whatever the way they do in the christian churches and furthermore the jews were celebrating with uh, in, in, in obedience to a very strict law about using unleavened bread because leaven is a symbol of sin in uh, you know in in and in, in at, at that time uh, and uh, therefore the <clears throat> And Paul mentioned that in his writings. And, and so they were supposed to use unleavened bread. And here you see in these churches a big fat loaf of leavened bread. And they're, and they're taking, you know, they're saying that the Lord Christ was sinful, you see, they're, they're, because they're using this leavened bread instead of the unleavened bread. So there's a lot of things wrong about there. But furthermore, Paul said, when he's talking about giving command to, to Christians to to, to to drink the bread and remember the memorial of his death once a year on nice on the 14th they uh, they uh, he also said keep on doing he said keep on doing this and so he said therefore every time you do it you re you remember you're remembering the death of the lord and then he said until he arrives until okay. he arrives mm -hmm. well he arrived Baha'u'llah came in fulfillment. Therefore, for for uh, for um, uh, a Baha'i to go in and uh, participate in the in their memorial service and start taking the bread and the wine, we're denying our own faith yes. that we believe he arrived. Because Paul said, "Until he arrives." So that's uh, that's already uh, null and void now. That that memorial, that Lord's Lord's Supper. And I mentioned this to a, to a Baha'i who was on the internet. I never heard back from him. <laughs> I mentioned, I, I explained that to him. He said he was talking about going to the churches and, and taking the memorial. I asked him, I said, when you go to churches, I said, do you partake of the memorial and eat the bread and the wine? Yes, I do. And then I explained to him, you know, as Baha'is, we have to be careful that we don't violate the principles and teachings of our own faith by when we go to churches, you know, because there are things in there which are stumbling blocks, which are not correct for us to endorse. But we, if we do it carefully, then we can associate with them and try and stimulate their thinking abilities and, and sow some seeds if we can. Well, I, I didn't know that either. Uh, so if we go to a church, one of the options we could have is not to take the bread. Uh, I have a Jewish background. We call that matzah. And you can buy it at the grocery store. That's unleavened bread, yeah, yeah. matzah. Yeah. So instead of having uh, the bread, we and we but we, but we obviously we are in fellowship, uh, you know, with all the people in these congregations. Yeah. Because Baha'u'llah says we should can associate now with people of all churches and all ways. Yeah. And so if we wanted to, we would say, well, I'm not going to take the bread, and they would say, well, why not? And then we say, well, it, it says that he said to do it until he arrives. Yeah. And because we <laughs> yeah. uh, recognize Baha'u'llah fulfills these prophecies yeah. and he's arrived, uh, oh. that, you know, I'd prefer not to do that right now. <laughs> uh, and that would give us an opportunity <laughs> exactly. to tell them who Baha'u'llah is yeah. uh, if we chose to uh, invoke that exactly. verse. And I never knew we could do that invocation. Yeah. That's a new invocation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So many things. Do you think it would right? be okay if we did take the bread, though? Well, the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, it, uh, the thing is, I would, I wouldn't do it myself because, it, because it does. Uh, we do believe that the Mahala, the, the 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 Christ has ar has arrived, and Paul said, until he arrives, it's quite clear in his writings. Yeah. And then if we accept that uh, uh, Muhammad is the next promised one after Jesus, uh, Muhammad did away with the sacrament. So he forbids the drinking of wine, and then they don't yeah. break the bread. Exactly. So, so it was definitely stated that it came to an end. The continual burnt offering was changed to the Eucharist, comes to an end with the coming of uh, Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad yeah. And so until he arrived, and then the people who accepted Muhammad don't do this from that point forward yeah, also. that point forward also fulfills it, right? Yeah. I just have a question. I was just thinking, because people are, um, there are different levels of progress. Uh -huh. So the different religions, they are like different grades in different, different schools. So, 
in that sense, you know, these people, the Christians, they are actually celebrating this because they are not aware of the return of Christ. So it's valid for them, you know, for oh. them. Oh. Yeah, so in that sense, when we participate with them, mm-hmm. you know, if we just do it as well in the memory, and because it was a sacred act, it was a religious act at that time, mm-hmm. so, you know, to do something like we go to memorials of the prophets you know, who passed away a long, long time ago, it's just something we're, we're commemorating, and it's an act of worship mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So won't it, it's just a question. Could it be, in that sense, justifiable? Like for Baha'is to actually... Well, I wouldn't pass judgment on anybody that did it, that's for yeah. sure. Myself, I would take Neil's, uh, 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 you know, uh, app attitude, make it an opportunity yeah. to try and, to try and uh, yeah. introduce him to the, to the Lord of the Age. You never know, you might yeah. capture the whole congregation at once yeah, if all you pulled a sudden. stunt like that. <laughs> things, like that yeah. things like that will probably happen or something. That's the type of stuff Jesus pulled in Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah. They had the Festival of Lights. And they would have to come in through the uh, gate for the Festival of Lights, which is Hanukkah now. Mm-hmm. And he stood there where they were lighting this. And while they were doing their rituals and their tradition, he said uh, he started to proclaim that he was the light of the world. So then uh, during the time of the sheep shearing, they had a gate in Jerusalem called the Sheep Gate. So he stood out there. You have to realize he was only four feet tall and had a hunchback and one eyebrow and couldn't grow a beard. He, so he was kind of looked... Uh, you know, different than p- most people also. Those are clouds too, weren't they? Yes, the cloud of his body w- interferes with the image they might have. Yeah. Anyway, he stood in front of the sheep gate, and as they were herding their sheep in, right there, while they were doing this, he was announcing uh, that whole dialogue in John where he says that he's the sheep and the true sheep, and then he says that he is the lamb, and then he says, oh, he says he is the door by which the sheep enter, and then he says he is the lamb, and then he says he is the true shepherd. So, and he would repeat this. So when the one shepherd came by to open the door, he was standing there and he said, I am the door by which the sheep enter. And this guy's looking at him going, what? And then he opens the actual door there and he lets his sheep in. And as the sheep were going through, he then says to the shepherd, uh, I am the, the true sheep, the lamb, you know? And then when the shepherd went through the door, before he closed it behind him, he yelled after him with a Parthian shot, I am the true shepherd. Well, then the next shepherd would come and he'd do this again. And he stood there all day long doing this over and over and over again. Amazing. Well, anyway, they crucified him. You know, he was annoying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, uh, he he did the opportunities. We can take opportunities to make symbolic acts. Now that I know about the invocation of the... Bread and the wine, I, I wonder what I, I might do with that in right. the future. <laughs> in the future. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very stimulating, Reg. Did you want to capstone this off with some final comments? No, I think uh, the hidden word of we, justice. we covered an awful lot of ground here today, everybody. And uh, thank you for participating in this discussion. It's been very uh, educational for me as well. Thank you, Ross and Neil. Thanks, Reg. And you, sir. Thank you very everyone. Thank you. And then, and then there's okay. the, hidden, the hidden word of Baha'u'llah. Uh, he kind of defines justice a little differently. Also, I think it's the second hidden word we can look up and read in the hidden words of Baha'u'llah. And he says that we should all see the truth with our own eyes and not through the eyes of others, and that this is true justice that we can experience by coming into contact with our own experience of uh, reality through justice. But maybe we can't do that unless we're also living the life of practicing this golden rule. Maybe if we're not living the life of the golden rules, we have like a thing that prevents us from seeing the truth with our own eyes. Like a veil. So thank you for uh, re- helping to lift this veil by uh, giving a deepening of justice. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, yeah. Reg. Mm-hmm.